angels be hampered on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Go of the Lord today. Amen, amen. Why don't you just shake hands with someone around you, greet them and in the Lord and let them know how glad that you are to see them today at Community Harvest. Amen.
house of the Lord today. Amen. 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 We're glad to see everyone out today. I know we have several out with sickness. We've had some surgeries uh, this week, and uh, we want to continue to pray for them and continue to pray for Susan. Of course, Brenda had uh, eye surgery this week, and and that's doing well. She's here this morning. Amen. And so we're thankful for that. Amen. And of course, Roger had uh, surgery this week. And we want to uh, remember him and uh, that they are recovering. Uh, of course, Don has been sick this week and and uh, it's it's got to come home, my understanding. And so uh, and so he's 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 doing better uh, than he was. And so we do, but we want to continue to pray for them. I'm sure that's where all of them are at this morning so i know we have several out and a lot out this morning but we're here amen and i don't know about you but i, I like to come and worship the lord amen amen and so uh, we just encourage you to to do that this morning amen 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 so our ushers will come at this time and, and uh, we'll let you worship in your giving amen and as they're doing that let me just give you uh, uh, <coughs> a few announcements of course We'll be taking up an offering today for the, uh, which we did this Wednes this past Wednesday, and some of you may have gave uh, then, but we're taking up an offering again today uh, for the Smoky Mountain Children's Home. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to include a donation, just mark it on your envelope or memo, and we'll be sure that it gets to them. Also, our youth uh, Christmas party will be tomorrow at 5, so remember that. Our church Christmas party will be Wednesday at seven o'clock so instead of having a regular discipleship amen we'll be having our church christmas party we're just uh, planning a lot of uh, fun activities and, and just uh, food and fellowship and so we we we, we uh, just looking for a good time uh, together so remember that next sunday uh <coughs> we'll be having a, a, our christmas service at two o'clock and uh so we we just encourage everyone uh, we, we figured that would give everyone chance to spend the morning with their families and they come and, and uh, worship the Lord together with the church family amen and celebrate the reason for the season so remember remember those things amen let's pray God I just thank you and I praise you God for the opportunity to be here today and for each one that's here we pray for all those that, that are not here today who's battling sickness and, and re uh, recovery from surgeries and, and we just healing Lord in their bodies and God, I just pray that you will bless every part of this service. God, I pray that you would, God, just uh, just anoint, Lord, uh, the, the worship, continue to anoint the worship and and uh, just the, the word today, just everything that's said and done, God, for your glory. And God, I just pray that you'll bless each one that gives. I pray a hundredfold blessing upon them, Lord, that, that you will just, uh, uh, just bless them as they give today. And we promise that we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it all. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. We appreciate your giving today. Worship the Lord together today. Amen. Amen. Have you come to worship Him? Amen. Amen. The Bible says that two or three gather together in His name, He'd be in the midst. Amen. And uh, so we just uh, we come to worship Him today. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. Love endures forever. 
serve a God that's faithful. Hallelujah. I said, aren't you glad that you serve a God that is faithful? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.
Shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. a new song to him today. Come on, just sing a new song to him today. Just tell him that you love him. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Come on, tell him that you praise him. We praise you, oh God. You are worthy. You are worthy of all our praise. You are worthy of all our praise. Come on, that's it. Just linger there for a minute. Oh, we worship you. We worship you, oh God.
I'd rather
you believe that, give him a hand clap of praise today. Amen. Jesus in anything, wouldn't you? Amen, amen. I said it's good to see everyone out this morning. Thank you, and I know that we have <coughs> several out for different reasons, but we are here, and uh, I don't know about you, but I come to to worship the Lord today. Amen, amen. You got your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. And John, if you can help me out, just give me a little bit more in my monitor so I don't... Um, amen. Matthew 1 verse 18 Amen. I appreciate John and Liv and all they do to help us we're running around doing all kinds of things and you know we appreciate we appreciate them Amen Matthew 1 verse 18 it says now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows after his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. I want to preach this morning. I'll probably go along these lines next week as well, but I want to preach um, as, as we're approaching Christmas on how Christmas connects us to God. Christmas connects us to God. Pray with me and for me today, if you would. God, I just thank you, and I praise you, God, for the opportunity to be in your house today. I thank you for each and every one here today. And God, we just pray that you would anoint this word that you've laid on our heart to share today. I pray that you would use it to, to minister to each and every one here today. Lord, that it would go forth, it would encourage, strengthen, and build up your people. God, I pray you would anoint us as a, a willing vessel. That's all we are, but we come to you, Lord, as a willing vessel for you to use. And God, I pray you would anoint us and use us once again, Lord, to minister your word. And God, we promise and we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it all. In Jesus' mighty name, and the church said, Amen. Amen. Christmas connects us to God. When we look at the creations of God and we see the magnificence, don't we? God made a universe of unbounded dimensions, measured out stars and galaxies. But God wanted more than world, so he created life. And he filled earth with plants and animals and, and monstrous and, uh, that was monstrous and microscopic. But God wanted more than life. He, he wanted friendship, so the Bible said he created mankind. And men and women, as God made them, would be a close-knit family of an infinite God, clothed though they were with flesh and blood. God and man enjoyed close fellowship until the children of earth stumbled. See, man chose disobedience and, and fled in, in shame from 
God's presence and sin became an unsurmountable a barrier between the Creator and His creatures. So, so there was a major disconnect, if you will. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, this connection is a, is a complicated problem. Uh, the children had no illusions about their weakness. They, they knew they were lost, uh, and they longed for the Father to whom every instinct drew them. It was a, a hopeless longing, all the same, for the separation remained. Uh, he was pure, and they were stained. Uh, how could they ever aspire to perfection that would make them worthy of him once again? This great problem must have a solution. The first order of business was, was uh, to reintroduce the children to their father. But how could impure flesh know pure spirit? There, there must be a way that men and women could know what God is like. Man, however, uh, could never comprehend the nature of heaven. To do so, he would need to enter those gates. Uh, and in their tainted humanity, they could not do so. Yet heaven... Uh, that would come to them. But how can heaven come to man? Heaven could not be poured into the stained vessel that was on earth. But there was another way. And you see, we call it incarnation. John 1, verse, verses 1 and 14 says, In the beginning was the Word. <laughs> And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. In our text, we have the story, don't we? Mary was with child by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, a righteous man, would, would send his, his fiance Mary uh, away secretly. But an angel appears to Joseph and tells him that Mary's conception is by the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and they will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Uh, hey man, does Christmas speak to our needy situation, or is it just a season for consumer boom? Think about that. We get caught up in Christmas, but what do we ever think? To, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong uh, with, with, with the uh, decorations and Christmas trees. Hey Amen. We love to, to go see lights from time to time and, and, and celebrate and, and, and do all the Christmas things. And, and open, we open Christmas presents and, and enjoy our family. But, but, but how many times do we, do we get caught up in all of that and we never take time to realize uh, amen, what the real reason for the season is uh, that Jesus, uh, amen, was, came to this earth. Uh, amen. He came for you and I. Amen. And that's the reason that we should be celebrating. Amen. I want to suggest to you that Christmas connects us to God. Amen. Christmas connects us to God. Now there are three things that the birth of Jesus and Christmas Speak to us today. First of all, the birth of Jesus tells us that God is love. Amen. God is love. Amen. That God would love us is a mystery to me because man is depraved. Amen. What is depravity? Depravity is that every part of man, his mind and will and emotions and flesh have been corrupted by sin. Genesis 6, 5 said, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the scripture attests that man is depraved. Jeremiah 17, 9 said, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. 
The Bible says that man does not seek God. Romans 3, 10 and 11 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. Man even loves darkness. John 3, 19 says, And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. You see, man by nature is lost. Man by nature is, is wicked and, and vile and, and separated from God, but yet God loves them. <laughs> he loves us. Aren't you thankful that God loves you today? God loves man even though he sees man's sin as he saw the wickedness in Noah's day. But God in his love. However, saw more than the evil of sin. He saw more. God looked down from heaven and he saw our need and he chose to send his only begotten son as a personal sacrifice. Amen. The late Dottie Rambo said it best when she said, He looked beyond my fault and he saw my need. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I may get stirred up. I could sing that, but I'm, I'm going I'm to move on. But think about that for a moment. Think about that for a moment. God saw the sinful and hopeless disconnect of man. He tried prophets and, and kings to call his people to the safety of his love, but this all failed. But God in his love loved sacrificially. Aren't you thankful that he loves you? There's an old song that I used to do from time to time, just a simple chorus. But it said, Amazing grace. Well, we'll move on. We'll move on. Some, some reason, I guess I'm getting old. It slipped my mind. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Where would I be? You only know. I'm glad you see through eyes of love a hopeless case, an empty place, if not for grace. Think about that. I want to sing that one more time. Amen. Where would I be? You only know. I'm glad you see through eyes of love a hopeless case, an empty place, if not for grace. Then it goes on to say, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I once was lost, but now I'm found. A hopeless case, an empty place, if not for grace. Aren't you thankful for grace today? Aren't you thankful for grace today? Think of the sacrifice of Jesus. He who was sinless took our sin so that sinners might be made the righteousness of God. I'm reminded of these words that ask the question, Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would pray? Not my will, but thine, Lord. <laughs> the answer I may never know. Why he ever loved me so. But to an old rugged cross. He go for who am I? Think about that. What a message. He is there. He is there with you. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you. I, uh, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I can't see him. Because, you see, he's not in the flesh, but it's better. 
because he lives inside of you and he will never leave you. I remember when I was a kid, my mom used to tell me I was young. She said, I said, Jesus lives in my heart. Mom would ask me, does Jesus live in your heart? And I said, yeah. She said, how did he get there? I said, I opened my mouth and swaddled him and there he is, you know. I didn't know any better. Amen, but I'm glad that Jesus lives in my heart, aren't you? I said, I'm glad that he lives in my heart. Amen. Colossians 1, 27 said to them, God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, this message is for all. To the one who, is not, who has lost everything and doesn't know which way to turn. To the one who has made so many mistakes in life that no one wants anything to do with him. To the one who has always felt insecure about themselves and was told that they would never amount to anything. The, the babe in the manger says God loves you and he chose you. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for God's love today so the first the birth of Jesus tells us that God is love secondly the birth of Jesus tells us that there is life amen man's sin and sin brings death and I've already stated that that, that man by nature is a sinner but, but let me re reiterate this with Scripture. Psalm 51, 5 said, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Isaiah 53, 6 said, All oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. See, sin doesn't stop with the fact that we are all guilty. Sin brings death both physically and spiritually. The scriptures declare in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. James 1.16 says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. If the story of man ended with man's sin in the garden, it would be hopeless. Because... Try as he may, man cannot reconnect with the holy God. He just can't do it. See, man needed a Savior, and the Savior came. Aren't you thankful that the Savior came today? His very name means Savior. Matthew one twenty one again says, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Acts 4.12 says, Nor is there salvation in any other, <laughs> for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The angel does not say, he shall reward his people for their righteousness. But he says he shall save their people from their sins. Aren't you thankful? Jesus came not to admire my beauty, <laughs> but to remove, remove my deformity. Amen. He came not to reward my virtue, but to remove my sin. And the first link between my soul and Christ is not my goodness, but my misery. Not my standing, but my falling. Not my riches, but my poverty. Aren't you glad that he came to save? Amen. If Jesus had not come and there was not Christmas, you and I would be eternally lost. And that's what we need to think about. Here in this season. Salvation is deliverance from sin. Therefore the believer has life. You and I who are saved have life. 1 John 5, 12 says, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Life because we are free from sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. I say we are free from sin. John 8, 32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
Amen. We are free from condemnation. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We are free from the penalty of sin. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You see, it is alive with meaning. John 10, 10 says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But he said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. You see, we don't just have just an existence. We have an abundant life. Because Jesus came, our lives have significance and meaning. We were created to know God and a fellowship with Him. Luke 2, 11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm thankful that He came. Amen. He is the reason that I celebrate. Amen. Because if he hadn't came, amen, we'd all be in trouble. We'd all be lost. I don't know how people can live without the Lord. I really don't. Amen, I need him and depend upon him every day. Couldn't make it without him. So first, the, the birth of Jesus tells us that God is love. Secondly, the birth of Jesus tells us that there is life. But thirdly, Christmas tells us that we are connected. We're, all, we're connected. Amen. We are connected to God. You and I are connected to God. Romans 14, 8 says, For we, if we live, we live to the Lord. <laughs> and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. 1 Peter 2, 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. To know Jesus is to know God the Father. And as believers, we are connected to God through Jesus. Think about that. He is our Father, and we are His children. <laughs> that word peculiar doesn't mean weird or odd. <laughs> it means ownership. I said it means ownership. The New American Standard Bible says it uh, uses God's possession. Amen. So, so he is the shepherd, and we are the sheep. I have a relationship with the Father, and I come to the Father through Jesus. For John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we are connected to God. We are also connected to each other. We are connected to each other. We're, we are a family. You say, Pastor, why do you like to do fellowship? and do? Because we're family. Amen. And we're connected. Amen. And if we're going to, going to see uh, the, the, the end time harvest, amen, it, it, at community harvest, amen, it's going to take every one of us uh, uh, linking and, and being connected together and being connected to God and working together for his kingdom. Amen. We are connected to each other. As children of God, we belong to the body of Christ. The scripture declares, Romans 12, 5, So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. You see, because the babe came in the manger, we can be part of his body. Think about that. Because the babe came in the manger, we can be part of his 
God. It's not a Baptist thing. It's not a Church of God thing. It's, it's not an Assemblies of God thing or whatever other denomination. It's not a white thing. It's not a black thing. It's not a Hispanic thing. It's not a rich thing. It's not a poor thing. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm glad to be part of the family of God. Because we're all connected together. We all have one goal. Amen. I don't know about you. Amen. But my goal is to is 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 to be ready. Amen. And and to to, 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 to uh, there's a heaven. Amen. Awaiting me. Amen. Jesus said in my father's house are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. I preached a message one time and if it were not so, he would have told us. Everything in the Bible, you know, if he said it, he, mean, he means it. I mean, if he wanted anything different, he would have told us. <laughs> Amen. We could stand on the word of God today. Amen. Come on, John. So Christmas connects us to God. And I hope that you understand my heart this morning as we were approaching Christmas and many of us are, have already been celebrating and will continue to celebrate let's not forget the reason for the season one of my favorite things and it was in the, the Christmas letter I think that Katrina gave out this morning one of the, my favorite traditions that that we started when Jessica and, and Jacob were real little. And uh, I'd sit them on my lap. And uh, I'd read them the Christmas story on Christmas. Before we ever opened one present. And as they've gotten older, they still love that tradition. They may have gotten a little bit too big to sit in my lap, you know. But they still, I think there was a, what was it, a couple of years ago, and uh, for whatever reason, I, I, it just, you know, it hadn't, it, I was, I was we, was, we was talking about presents or, or whatever, and I think it was Jessica or Jacob, one, I believe it was Jessica, she said, Dad, aren't you going to read the Christmas story? And that done my heart so good. Because that, that meant that much to her. And, you know, we, we don't need to forget. And that's the whole reason that I started that tradition. Because I didn't want them, even from the time they were little, to sit in my lap. I wanted them to know the reason that we were really celebrating. And I pray that I've said something today that has helped you understand how Christmas really does connect us to God. You see, we'll, we'll be opening up some gifts, and, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. We enjoy that time. But you know, the greatest gift ever given on Christmas was when Jesus was born in a manger over 2,000 years ago to become the Savior of the world. Let's not forget the reason for the season. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. Amen. John's going to sing. Amen. Our altar is open. Whatever you, you want to come. Uh, of course, the altar is always open for those that don't know the Lord or, or uh, have a, maybe battling some things straight away from the Lord, whatever. But you can come to the altar and, and, and for whatever reason. Not be it, not have to feel ashamed of that. You know, too many times the devil will try to get us to think, well, you don't need to come to the altar. What's people going to think? They're going to think something's wrong with you. I wonder what's happening to brother so and so, or what's going on with sister so and so. Sometimes, you know, we can just come to the altar, not, nothing wrong with us whatsoever. We just want to say, God. I love you. I just want to come to talk to you. I let you know that.
And then the altar is open for you. Whatever need that you have today, he's going to sing. Amen. Let's come and fill our offering today.